Call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer for our servicemen and women and all of those who have passed away in our community. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Gaughan? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A breakdown of the eligible salaries for the liquid fuels account for the months of October, November, and December 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, single tax office city funds distributed comparison report. 2016-2017, year to date, December 31, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the regular meeting of the members of the Scranton Housing Authority held December 4, 2017. Any comments? Received and filed. 3D, controller's report for month ending December 31, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, minutes of the regular meeting of the Lackawanna County Land Bank, held December 8, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting, held December 20, 2017. Are there any comments? Received and filed. 3G, minutes of the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting, held December 20, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3H, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting, held December 20, 2017. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3I, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting, held December 20, 2017. Any comments? Received and filed. 3J, agenda for the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting, held January 17, 2018. Are there any comments? If not received and filed, do any council members have announcements at this time? Uh, yes, I have one announcement. Uh, this is going to be a public safety announcement. The Civil Service Commission would like to announce that they'll be conducting an entry level exam for firefighter and EMT candidates. The written exam will be held on Saturday, March 3rd, 9 a.m. The test location will be the University of Scranton to Naples Center, room 407, which is located at 900 Mulberry Street. Interested candidates can pick up applications at the HR department on the third floor of City Hall starting today and continuing through Friday, February 2nd between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. There is a non-refundable application fee of $100 required for the testing. Candidates must be at least 20 years of age on the date of the written exam, possess a valid driver's license, have a high school diploma or GED, be of excellent morale character, and be able to pass an extensive background check. The top 60 candidates on the written exam with a score of 70% or above will be able to proceed to the next level of the testing process. So if you wanted to be a fireman, now is the best chance that you have. Uh, go sign up, take a test, and, uh, and good luck, everybody. Anyone else? Um, I have a couple announcements to make. Um, the first one, we had an executive session earlier this evening to discuss pending litigation. Uh, also, I'd like to remind people that DPW crews are continuing to collect Christmas trees that are left at the curb until the end of this month. Um, the trees should not be in bags, and they will be recycled. Um, another reminder that uh, snow from sidewalks needs to be removed in 24 hours after the event by city code. Um, just want, one, one of our inspectors wanted to announce that as well. And finally, the, um, since our meetings have changed, ECTV wanted me to announce the new broadcast schedule for city council meetings. So obviously Monday at six o'clock, those of you who are watching now, the meetings will be broadcast live. They'll also be broadcast Tuesday at 2.30 p.m., Wednesday at 10 a.m., Saturday at 12 p.m., and Sunday at 8 p.m. So that will be the schedule um, ongoing. 
Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. Uh, as we start the year off, it's great to be back for another year, another term with Council. Um, as you're probably familiar from past years, many of our early announcements from county government at this time come from the Penn State Extension Office in Lackawanna County. So I'll give you a few as we go through the year uh, with Penn State Extension. Many of their early activities in January, February, March are indoor things that deal with health and wellness, uh, training for different things, so on and so forth. When the weather heats up, they tend to go outside and get very involved with things dealing with agriculture, gardening, uh, particularly through the Master Gardeners program. So to start with, their Growing Stronger Strength Training Classes program uh, is heating up now in January and February. It's a 12-week program focused on strength training and nutrition. It's open to adults aged 40 and up. It's Monday and Wednesday mornings beginning February 7th at the West Granton Older Adult Community Center. Uh, the cost to register is $115 per person. For registration or more information, please call 1-877-345-0691. It's a good program. Uh, we've seen lots of folks contact our office with good feedback. It focused mainly on, again, strength training for everyday activities, as well as nutritional advice, and some other things like sleep wellness, so on and so forth. So anyone aged 40, it's a great chance to get in a little bit better physical shape at the start of the year, maybe build on your New Year's resolution, things of that nature. Uh, the second thing is the Serve Safe Food Service Safety Certification course is also being run by Penn State Extension. It's Monday, February 19th, and then Monday, February 26th is the second day. Starts at 9 a.m. each day. Uh, the second day in there, the 26th, is when they'll do their written exam uh, for certification for folks who are enrolled in the course. Uh, the, food, the course covers the safe handling, storage, and preparation of food. Uh, it's a requirement for certain folks that work in the food service industry. The cost is $185 to register. Uh, the registration deadline is February 14th. To register or for more information, please contact Nicole McGeehan at 570-421-6403. Uh, the next two items probably don't pertain in many cases to city residents, but Penn State Extension asks that we mention them just in case. Uh, the Northeast Vegetable Growers Meeting is Thursday, January 25th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Newton Ransom Fire Company building. The cost is $36 per person to attend. And also the Commercial Fruit, Fruit Tree School Growers Meeting is Thursday, February 15th, 9 a.m. at the Iron Skillet Restaurant at Petro in Avoca. The cost is $30 per person in advance or $40 at the door for that. To register or for more information on either of those, contact John Esslinger, the Penn State Extension Office, at 570-316-6516. And lastly, while I'm sure a lot of us are happy with the warmer weather here, I know that I am, we just remind everyone that McDade Park now has, I think this is our fifth year, a built-in area for sledding and sleigh riding during snowfalls, after snowfalls, during cold weather. Uh, the facility is open there. Whenever it snows, it's available. Uh, so anytime, please come in and uh, use the park facility for sledding and sleigh riding. Uh, just obey standard park rules that are posted and uh, just have fun. Uh, it's open from dawn till dusk. And that's all we have. Uh, thank you folks as always. With the schedule change, I'll be here still on a monthly basis. There may be some nights, including this evening, where I may have to leave to attend another meeting. Uh, in most cases, hopefully I won't, but it'll just depend month to month. But looking forward to more good work uh, with the four returning councilmen and uh, Mr. Donahue, of course, who I've known for a couple years from around the community. Uh, look forward to doing more good things here with you. So thank you. Thank, thank you very right. much. Our next speaker is Joan Hodawanitz. See how tall he is. Joan Hodawan, it's Scranton resident and taxpayer. Um, I'm going to raise a couple issues and ask questions, not that I expect you to answer the questions, but I, I want to give you something to think about as we enter this new year. Uh, 298 days since you passed the Knowles Insurance three year contract with the city. And I'd be very interested to see if we ever see an updated list of the insured vehicles and real estate. 298 days and counting. We, uh, we do have a revised list. Um, there are some figures on here that we're not sure if can be released yet. So at the very least, my suggestion in caucus was to redact the figures, um, but to release the 
building and items, which I think is what you were requesting. Well, our, one of our points of interest is to see exactly what those figures are. I, I can't imagine why it should take longer than 298 days for them to get this information correct. Right. I mean, I want to know, okay? It's not just, did you remove the public library from the list? I want to know how much we're insuring the zoo for, like $783,399? Let's hope not. Next issue, um, when are we going to get the results of the Arcata stormwater study? When that got passed last year, it was projected that it would take something like eight or nine months, which would have put it into November time frame, and it's, it's overdue, and it's we should start seeing that. It's my understanding we should see a preliminary draft uh, sometime within the next two months. We be in the public? Yes, I hope so. Okay. Well, if we get it, you'll see it. I'll be asking. Uh, next, um, Jim Lockwood did a good job uh, reporting on the parking meters. I'd be very curious if you can give the public some kind of timeline for when these meters are going to be repaired. Um, I don't drive, so it's not an issue for me, but I do patronize businesses in downtown Scranton, and more than one business owner has complained about this. Um, and I'm sure that there's a financial impact on them, or to put it another way, what are they getting for their business and business privilege and mercantile taxes that they pay? Um, you know, you can't have it both ways. If we're going to tax them, then, then we ought to make sure that they have access for parking. Um, isn't, is it, isn't that one of the privileges they get, is access to parking? So I'd like to know if there's a timeline on when this, these uh, things are going to be repaired. And also, why can't they post this information on their website? Now, I mean, that's why yes. God made the Internet, right? I agree. Okay. So if you could put a bug well, up sometime, there. Well, they told me sometime by the end of the week they should have the equipment back, the meter, meters back repaired. So I would expect some installations to be done this week. Yeah, but it should be a matter of protocol, and any, any repair issues like that are on the oh, website. Absolutely. So absolutely. you ought to put a, a burr under their saddle and, you know, make sure they yep. start doing it. It's one of the problems when you privatize something. They're not answerable to the general public and the voters. Speaking of accountability, I applaud Auditor General Eugene De Pasquale for his support of Senate Bill 597 which would allow his office to audit mun municipal authorities. One of the problems we have with the municipal authorities is the appointing authority, be it the mayor or county commissioners, appoint people, and they go off and they do their own thing. They're not answerable to the, to the body that appointed them, and they're not answerable to the voters. And so I think it's only right that a state agency like the Auditor General's office, when they see a red flag, have the authority to go in there without invitation and audit them. And uh, Mr. D. Pasquale says if the bill passes, the first audit he's going to conduct is of the sewer authority. Enough said about that. And finally, I'm still looking for plan B. You know, all these lawsuits that, that are swirling over the city's head like the Sword of Damocles, especially the Act 511 lawsuit, I want to know what the plan is if these lawsuits go against the city. And uh, I hope it's not, well, if we have to, you know, refund the taxpayer that they're going to take it out of this taxpayer hand and put it in this hand, okay? Uh, that's not going to cut the, cut the mustard with me. So those are things I would like you to think about and be able to give more answers in your next meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Bullis. Evening, Council. Bob Bullis, Scranton. It's nice to see a bunch of friendly faces for the new year. Hopefully we'll get some more accomplishments than we did last year. Um, one thing, uh, the dinner I did have this year on Christmas Day was a tremendous, tremendous success. 
best one we ever had. And, uh, you know, people came from all over. We did over 3,000 people and delivered over 500 meals. The press was great. Janetti's, Walmart, Sam's Club, and Wilkes-Barre were tremendous in uh, some of the cooperation they gave us. So, and most importantly, the people that showed up and my volunteers. Hopefully next year it'll be a bigger success than this one was. One thing I want to bring up, I saw the Iron Horse closed, but I don't know why the theater is closed, why they're still not serving food since we're a great downtown area for food and all that. You know, there's, I think, more to read between the lines that's going on there. But more importantly, what bothers me the most, I brought it up for the last couple years here, is that the mall on taxes. Yet they got a reduction in their taxes rather than being properly assessed. That assessment helps alleviate some of the pressure with the school board and all the other issues we have here. But I'd like to really know, and I asked Mr. Gahan this because I heard transparency all last year, time and time again, and then the Skunk family, so I'll represent myself in that manner. I'd like you to find out, if you would, sir, where our 500 parking spaces are that we paid the millions of dollars to the mall are. I'd like to see where the money is that was collected from the St. Patrick's Day parades, if those par parking spaces were used, that comes back to the city. I want to see that if he's renting those out or you're paying to park in there and they're parking in those pay spaces, we want the money back. I'd like you to find that out for me. I'd like to end the word transparency here, and I want to hear the word reality of what we're doing. And if you would do that, I'd really appreciate it. Then I'll leave my skunks outside then. We won't have to worry about it. The uh, fees on the University of Scranton, we have south side complexes. Anybody paid attention seeing how that's growing? We should get a fee out of that. I'm looking to make a money for the city. I'm looking for money for the taxpayers here. I'm looking at reducing our debt that the incompetence of the school board has done and what, where they've put us. I'm looking at fairness and equality here. I pay well, 50,000 in back taxes on a church I pay 35 grand for. Yet nobody wants to say a word about anything with the mall, putting this in, doing that as a commercial business and all that. We need to assess them. Not unfair about it. It's the reality of life. We all gotta pay, so should he. I'm tired of hearing I'm throwing a million here, five million there, two million here. Where the heck's our money? And that's what it's up to council. Let's get that ball rolling. Let's get equality here. And let's get some fairness here. The uh, ballparks, I mean, they're going to be tremendous. They're going to be charging people to go in there. I think uh, let the university partner with us now since we gave them a weight to them, thanks to Doherty and his administration. You know, the uh, schools are closing. Kids can't go to school out snowing. You had to turn TV on, where are they? Out skiing, out sleigh riding on the slopes that the county and everybody has for them. I mean, we gotta get a reality check here. When a school closes, employees don't show up for work at the companies. Do you know what it costs us when our employees can't come to work and then turn the TV on, see them at the mall, see them here, see them there? They're not confined to their house. They're out enjoying life, yet we're paying, and we're paying substantial money. And I think the company should start going to the school district and ask for compensation when our employees can't come to work. Let them pay us for our losses. See how many people go back to school. Instead of take, 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 give a little. So things like that, they're just getting out of control around here. I mean, the city has the potential to grow and grow properly. But we're not doing that. We're not following the program. And it starts with us here. The people you put first are the little people, not the politicians, not all those that could get away with what they're getting away with here, there, and everywhere else. It's the little people that are getting burnt. And those are the ones we got to start looking for. We want to build bigger schools. We want to make this bigger here, bigger there. But teachers got to understand it's not the school that teaches the kids. It's the teachers, and the quality of teachers have to be role models and show what they're doing. 
And if they don't like the jobs they're doing, then it's time for them to pack up and go find something else to do. But don't kill this city any more than you have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bulls. Lee Morgan. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Uh, Lee Morgan, of course. Um, you know, it's, it's my opinion, like I've said many times before at this podium, that I think the city is going to lose every single one of these court cases. And I find it extremely troubling that the Council is asking for Plan B. The Council should have a Plan B and should be advising the Mayor as to what that plan is. Um, and maybe that's the bedrock of the problem we've had in this city for maybe its whole history. You know, people ask, nationally they ask, how does a city get this corrupt? It's been asked. Maybe Scranton has always been this corrupt when you think about it. Because Scranton was born during the coal mining era. There was a lot of money made here. There was a lot of money going, moving behind the scenes. Were there always cost overruns on all the projects? Was there all this fast and slippery money moving through the city all, the, all this while? And maybe that's why we just can't turn the corner here, because it's all we know. And the voters, they don't expect anything from their elected government, because when you talk to them, they say it's a waste of time. And you know, not to take anything away from anybody, you know, people are talking about vote counts. I'd be more worried about all the people that don't vote. I wouldn't worry about who got the most votes because it's not really relevant. You may have won an election, but nobody here has proved they can run this city, not in any capacity, no matter what they're elected to. You know, I think we should really consider abolishing the 2.4% wage tax, even though the city is going to lose every single one of these court cases. I'm just not sure if anybody has followed through with the double pensions, but I'm going to look into that and see if any of those cases have been appealed and are still spinning, because if they are, I think we're going to lose them too. Um, and I think the voters and the residents of this city have to get ready for what's really going to happen here when that storm breaks, because this ship is not going to be on top of the water. It's going to be a submarine. Now, I think it's time to get very serious here. I think it's time to do some research and hire somebody to do some research, an attorney, a real attorney, and find out where the University of Scranton's assets are and how much they possess. And then it's time to find out what the assets of Lackawanna College are, Johnson's College, and Marywood, and find out how much money they actually have. It could be billions of dollars. And then I'd have a sit down with the University of Scranton, and I'd tell them that you are going to fund the police department, not part of it, the whole police department. And Marywood, Lackawanna College, Johnson School, they're going to fund the fire department. And that's the way it's going to roll. Or we're going to go into court and we're going to fight it out and we're going to try to strip you of your tax exemptions. It's time to stop playing games. You've lit the residents on fire in this city for so long that there's nothing but despair and poverty here. And all the grant money, read it. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on right to across the street, Adams Plaza. Right, Mr. Perry? I mean, look at it for what it is. The people are out. They're out of money. The government was incompetent. Made a bunch of deals. You know, the sewer deal was just unbelievable. But then I'm sending something to the PUC on Wednesday that's probably going to really open their eyes because I've gotten their attention once before. And as a matter of fact, I still have their attention on that issue. But I'm not an attorney, but I can tell you this, I'm not afraid of an attorney, and I'm not afraid of a judge. And I'll wheel myself anywhere. And I understand, understand case law, and I understand statutes. And I'll stand and fight on something the size of a dime if I know I'm right. And I'm not afraid to lose. 
There's only one problem. I hope we had somebody in our government that understood that. But we don't. The council gave away the money for the stormwater collection system and the sewer deal. And now we're going to come back to the residents and we're going to try to, I don't know what you want to call it. I'd call it extortion. Okay, by telling them that they're going to have to pay for the stormwater collection system under this city and repair it and buy all the equipment. This sewer deal is not going to turn out to be a deal. It's going to be a deal breaker for the residents of the city. And what we really need to make this city come back to life is an end to the 2.4% wage tax that wage earners are paying so people may honestly maybe move back into the city and start buying property and not be sucked dry of all their assets and their earnings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident, awaiting my tax bill. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to see Council review once again a ban on recycling equipment being used for trash. It's passed out by the DPW if you have a trash bill. And uh, it should be used for recycling and not trash. There are some places in town that have almost exclusively trash buckets in back of their apartment houses. Inexcusable. Now, uh, will that executive session uh, with the uh, lawsuits, will that be televised? We, are, we actually just already had that. Um, the executive sessions are, are closed door because they're regarding matters uh -huh. of litigation. Um, but that was prior to tonight's meeting. Okay, so it won't be televised? No. No, okay. Because uh, it should be. That's my opinion. Um, once again, I pick up the paper and um, somebody wants to direct where their pilot money goes. And <clears throat> I have a special suggestion, turn it down. You know, I'm tired of people looking to pay for studies with pre-contrived conclusions. We had one and what do we get? We got lawsuits. We have a sewer authority that's, now there's some kind of lawsuit on that, which was a subject which I just asked about. The directors from Pell and HJS Strategies, HJ Strategies, ignored the law. They should have known about that, that selling a public asset was not legal even and you know it just goes on and on and on and when when is it all going to end we have to stop this uh the voters they don't want responsibility for their vote you know i listen to a bunch of family members on thanksgiving complaining about conyers and these people were compensated for uh the way their congressman was acting you know it's like Oh, okay, well, if, you know, you and I work together and you bop me on the head and hurt me, I, I'm on occupational compensation. Uh, and you're not off the hook for the crime, but... Uh, <clears throat> so, in other words, who you hire, you're responsible for. And, in fact, that is the case, is uh, uh, politicians are our employees. To a certain extent so I mean it's just uh, we have three issues here I guess the sewer authority the uh, taxes 511 taxes and and uh, the trash fee and that's being headed by a landlord who probably drags a bunch of people into town rents out a place to a family that doesn't want to recycle, maybe even has his recycle barrels behind the house being used to haul out trash, and 
piling the damn things up. Uh, I've seen them where there's trash falling out of them. There's so, many, so much trash being thrown out. No recycling buckets in front of the place. So it, it's just, uh, we have to change our ways here somehow. And hopefully with the new council, we'll get that because there was a former president that was just too amenable to anything that went on and uh, went back to Doherty. And uh, uh, I didn't see where all of these uh, double pensions and everything, I didn't see where, what the purpose was. If you're gonna be paying somebody double to retire and then hiring somebody to replace them, uh, where's the savings? It just doesn't add up. It's, it's not, and the meters, that's another story. I certainly hope they get, they should have a core meter. They should have a couple remanufactured meters to just walk over there and turn the key and throw them in, because that's how I'm pretty sure they get put in. An electronics box and a coin box and whatever, and throw it in. And that's it. 10 or 15 of them, then you send those out, get them repaired, and you're back in business. But uh, charging somebody $3 because you don't want to fix the meters, not a good policy. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you very much. Ron Elman. Okay, relax, Council. My attack tonight's on Scranton tomorrow. Um, I'm just wondering why a company that's only a couple years old and, and doesn't have any earth-shaking success to speak of, they, they got a telephone answering machine that I, I phoned them half a dozen times or more, and that's all I ever got, and the other phone line was dead. They got 27 employees and associates, so they have to have a sizable payroll and expenses and benefits and bonuses and so forth. Why were they given $275,000 for downtown? And, and Every, every week there's an editorial saying how great downtown is, how exuberant, how, how everything is growing and we need apartments and all. There's something's wrong with the, uh, the way one of these people sees it. Maybe it's not me because there's too many people complain about the same things. <sighs> I, I am not anti-downtown or anti-mall, believe me. I just, like I've said several times, to me they're both dinosaurs. You go to Montage or, or Viewmont Mall, it, it, just, it just puts downtown to shame. And I think the mall is extremely mismanaged to, to let a music company go because of, of rent negotiations and, having the, the movie closed. I don't know why, something's, something's wrong. I'd rather go see Mr. Clark's trains. I, I, you can't imagine how many people would go over and over and over again to see those trains with their children compared to an aquarium. But that's what makes horse races. Yeah. Now next, about Reverend Keller. I'm not attacking the school or Reverend Keller or Jews or Muslims or Buddhists or anybody. I'm just stating a fact. Reverend Keller's $150,000 donation to the city in lieu of taxes that he designated to go to Scranton tomorrow, he threw the money away. 
That was a gift from the school to Scranton tomorrow. It had nothing in the world to do with the city. He still owes us $150,000 according to Webster. A donation is a gift. It is something bestowed, transferred freely, what is one's own to the permanent possession of another without, this is for the reverend, without asking anything in return. It is to make available, furnish, grant. But now listen to this. It cannot never be designated for a specific purpose. So y'all need to get on him to give us this 150,000 donation or quit boasting about it. And as far as $3 million replacing what was taken off the tax rolls for 30 years, that's ludicrous. Gee whiz, for, think of what 30 years of houses paying the taxes. Remember strict store and some of the buildings that are gone? We got nothing. And they brag about $3 million over 30 years? God, how many people, families and, and houses were, were foreclosed on because of the tax base has gotten so enormous. This family's been destroyed, displaced. They moved out of the area. There's abandonments because of the tax base. He certainly, like I said, I'm not attacking the reverend. Mr. DeNaples would kill me if I said something adverse like that. Brother Bill, am I the only one that heard you December 4th ask why we are throwing away money at Scranton tomorrow. This is just senseless. It's a private company that we are supporting with tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ullman. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Uh, Marie Schumacher. Uh, first, Go back to next uh, last week, uh, Wayne. You said you were going to get me the uh, compensation, workers' compensation. Yeah, I, I asked for it. I'm waiting for it. I should have it by next week. What about the? Uh, did you check on the status of the budget questions that were asked, submitted in writing? No. Would you? I'll ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, do we have a copy? Does anybody on the council have a copy of the settlement agreement with the uh, people who the, in, from New Jersey that sold us the uh, uh, Wyoming Avenue and Linden property? Or no. put another way, are we going to get hit with, with more money going out the door as part of the settlement agreement? Now, my understanding is that the sale transaction was the settlement agreement. I'm sorry? The transfer of the, of the deed was the settlement agreement. When we bought the property, that was the end of the lawsuit. You're talking about the, the empty lot on, on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That doesn't, that was not that, stated that way. That was separate, was stated no, separately that there was, that was a settlement agreement in. No, my understanding that was. Could you know, we get I'll, that? I'll, I'll could, look into that. Yeah, but that's my understanding. Is could we get we, that in writing from the solicitor's office? I can ask. Uh, meetings. Again, you have chosen to pick Monday nights to meet. Uh, the Home Rule Charter, which. I know you look upon as a, a menu and not a not a true charter, but under Section 401, Operation and Procedure of City Council, Section 401, Meetings, the council shall meet once a week in regular session in regular council chambers. First sentence. 
There are still five more holidays that will be, ha that will be on Mondays. Um, next week, there will be a school board meeting. I attend occasionally. Joan Hodanowitz has been going pretty regularly, and others may choose to do that. And I think that uh, at least on those weeks when the public can go to those meetings, and that you should meet on a different night. And we should have meetings once a week. And that you should be coming up with a, a what-if plan for this city. There are a lot of anxious people out there. They know what's happening to them with the school board and the school taxes, but you know, go over the last decade and see how much has gone. And then look at what's happening to our property. Uh, I did speak to someone today who told me that it is possible to apportion buildings by taxability. Now, assuming that, for instance, let's just take the building down at the corner of Linden and Adams that the university bought. It has lavish in it and I think something else there. Uh, we know lavish is a for-profit entity, but I'm willing to bet that the University of Scranton is not paying one thin dime for that in property taxes. I don't know who else uh, occupies that building. I don't know if the university even has anybody in there. So if, if we're not going to have a reapportionment, we should at least have a hub test. And part of that should be to ask, any, are there any buildings that are occupied by for profit and what's the square footage and they should be taxed i don't know why we just you know you can both sit there who has the now has the uh community development which of you is responsible for community development i am okay have you followed up with any of the people that have uh any of the businesses that have had problems so far this year to see what, why they are leaving the city? At the moment, I'm in the process of just getting an understanding of how uh, OECD works, but I will be getting into that in the next few weeks. Okay, look forward to uh, what you learn. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Perry, do you have any motions or comments? I just have uh, one, one quick one from uh, one of the speakers brought up parking meters. Parking meters was a hot topic uh, this last week. And I know when we uh, met with DNC, which referred us to ABM, we were sold a professional bill of goods. And that's what we anticipating operating with and working with uh, as a public and private company. Uh, I'm just asking for them to hold up to their bargain just a little bit more, uh, w especially when it comes to communication on what's happening uh, with our meters as of right now. And I think the suggestion that was brought up about posting down meters on their website is at the very least something that they can do. Uh, so if there's not any uh, objections to sending a letter from council to ABM, uh, I would just like it stating uh, that we would like any and all down meters on a go forward posted on their website with approximate date of correction. Well, I mean, I, I don't think that's too much to ask. And I know there's been discussions going on and I know Councilman Evans will talk more on this. Uh, but yeah, they, it's a private company, but they're working with the public and they, they need to understand that. And one of the things that I felt comfortable with this company was that they ha this isn't their first rodeo. They've done it in other cities, bigger cities. So they, they, know, they know the game plan. So again, all we're asking is just a little courtesy. Keep us up to date. What's happening so we can relate on to the people who ask us. Uh, sometimes we feel like we're in the dark here way too often uh, when it comes to situations like that. And, and in today's day and age, we really shouldn't be. There should be, 
you know, information should fly like that. So uh, I'm just asking for them to keep us in the loop so we can keep everybody else in the loop. Uh, but that's, Mr. Rogan, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you very much. Mr. Donahue, any motions or comments? Uh, yeah, I just, I don't have much tonight, but I'd like to briefly touch on a few different issues. Um, first, since the last meeting, I was able to review the engineering report uh, regarding the Young Kennedy property and also sit down with Mr. Young to go over his concerns. Um, there was a meeting held last week between the Youngs, Kennedys, uh, representatives from O'Reilly and Associates, as well as Councilman Evans and Gone. Um, I did not attend because if there were three council members present, it would have to be publicly advertised, which would have further delayed the, pro the project. And I wanted Mr. Young to be able to express his concerns. Um, so I I'll just let Councilman Evans and Gone go into further detail regarding that meeting. Um, I would just like to say that I'm looking forward to working with the administration over the next coming weeks and months to move this project forward so that it's acceptable to all parties. Um, secondly, I would just like to touch on a situation that arose last week regarding the downtown parking meters. Um, unfortunately, you know, irresponsible financial decisions by prior, prior councils forced the city to give up control of parking assets in order to stave off the city's financial collapse. But we have to, so we have to deal currently with the cards we are dealt. Um, but I think moving forward, we need to work with ABM to first make sure that absolutely no parking spaces have bags or are taken out of commission just because the meter is being serviced. Um, there are downtown businesses that rely on that, that con continuous flow of traffic in and out, you know, for their businesses. Uh, secondly, I think we need to start to develop a process to more openly to facilitate communication uh, between ABM, the city, downtown businesses, and residents, as well as the public at large. Um, and then lastly, I'd just like, I would like to make a motion to draft a letter to Auditor General De Pasquale in support of his request to expand his office's authority to include the municipal authorities to expand his office's authority to include the municipal authorities as well as the state legislator, the lack of authority to perform those audits without being asked to do so undermines the primary role of the Auditor General as the public's fiscal watchdog. Um, and I'd also like to copy Senator Blake as well as State Representatives Flynn and Haggerty along with that. If that would be in the form of a motion, I would second that. On the question? Uh, yes, on the question. I am in uh, full support of Senate Bill 597 and the effort uh, by the Auditor General Eugene D. Pasquale to gain greater oversight of municipal authorities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. <coughs> the fact that the Auditor General currently doesn't have the authority to simply come in and audit an authority without being invited is absurd. The Auditor General's efforts are particularly important for the City of Scranton in light of the stonewalling that City Council, the public, and the media faced when asking questions about the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority to Pennsylvania American Water. In May of 2017, after months of stall and delay tactics by this administration and the Scranton Sewer Authority, I asked the Sewer Authority Board to invite the Auditor General in to audit the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority to Pennsylvania American Water, a very simple request. In one of the most egregious, appalling, and spineless acts that I've ever seen, the mayor's appointees to the Scranton Sewer Authority Board voted against the request. They voted against transparency. If everything was done above board, as Mayor Courtright and others so often have suggested, then what is the harm in shining a little light on the deal to make sure and verify? I would urge Mayor Courtright, in addition to the others that Councilman Donahue has asked, to sign on to this letter and to fully support the Auditor General in his quest to increase transparency and accountability in local government. Thank you. Anyone uh, else? Yes, on the question. Yeah, I have no issue with this whatsoever. Uh, we've asked uh, the Auditor General uh, to take, take a deep look at this and, and other issues. And it could have prevented and would have prevented a lot of these questions that we had if, if we did have an independent third party audit the situation. Uh, I just, I can't stress that enough. And to have it rebuked so many times, uh, you know, it's kind of unthinkable. But yes, I'm absolutely in favor of this motion. Yeah, on the question, quite frankly, this is 
really a no-brainer uh, and long overdue. So I, I welcome this legislation. I applaud uh, the Auditor General for bringing it forth. Um, truly, uh, he is somebody who has the best interest of all of the citizens of Pennsylvania at heart. So I, I absolutely will vote for this. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Evans, any motions or comments? Uh, yes, briefly on, on the Young property. I don't want to get too deep into this uh, because we're still, it's a work in progress, but Councilman Gaughan and myself met with uh, Riley Associates and the Youngs and the Kennedys uh, to, and we feel like we developed a framework to uh, resolve this issue once and for all. Uh, so we're waiting on the administration to respond. Uh, so far, my, from what I've, the people I've talked to within the administration, it's been favorable, but uh, uh, we have to hear from the mayor yet. But I expect a positive response, and finally we'll be able to put this issue behind us and uh, get this thing taken care of for the youngs. Uh, another news, our, our Monday meetings will, I think, in my view, open up additional opportunities for more work sessions and the revisions of the idea sessions that we started a few years ago. Previously, our Thursday meetings and scheduling conflicts played a role in delaying the renewal of the session, so I would expect, because of the change to Monday, that we'll have more meetings than in past years, and we'll have more informative work sessions, as well as more members of the public involved through work sessions and the idea session format uh, that we expect to start soon. With that said, I would like to announce the first idea session for 2018 on February 22nd at 6 p.m. That's a Thursday. It is our goal to have at least one per quarter in 2018, a total of at least four meetings this year to meet with the public and come up with real ideas and real solutions. The format will be quite simple. We will meet with, here in council chambers. The sessions will be approximately one hour or longer. The public will be invited and there will be a clear subject and objective for each meeting. The first 30 minutes or so of the meeting will be to develop as many ideas as we can on a specific topic in the last 30 minutes or so will be to develop and reduce those ideas to manageable, workable, doable ideas as the council and the community that we all can get behind. So the idea session format will be simply be called six in 60s. We are looking for six ideas in 60 minutes. The first session we'll be inviting the small business community and quite simply the charge for that evening will be what ideas do they have that would make the city of Scranton more business friendly for the small businesses that are currently operating in the city and to attract more small businesses into the city? Of course, my fellow councilmen will be asked to participate, and while the first meeting will be co-chaired by myself and Councilman Gone, future meetings will be chaired by two different councilmen, and the subject for those sessions will vary depending on the need and the interest of the chairs. And finally, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. These are not complaint sessions, they will be idea sessions. So if you choose to participate, you'll be asked to leave your complaints at the door and join us for a positive session on making the city the best it can be. That's all I have for it now. Thank you. Councilman Gaughan, any motions or comments? Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank Councilman Evans uh, for bringing up the idea sessions again. I think they're, it's a good idea. Um, and I think what we saw the last time uh, when we when we went through these meetings was a lot of good things came out of them. Specifically, we were taking a look at uh, technology, Councilman Wexler and I. And one of the ideas that came out of uh, the meeting was the program that we have now, Granicus. So we now, the public can see everything that we see up here, where in the past you would have to come down and ask for a copy of the legislation. Now everything that uh, your councilman up here see, you can see online. Uh, you don't have to request it anymore. So we are uh, opening up the lines of communication between uh, the governing body and the public. So hopefully we'll see more of that. Um, I just have a few citizens requests. The first one, uh, Mrs. Reed, we received a letter from a gentleman um, about 623 Crown Avenue. Um, apparently the property is collapsing. He provided pictures uh, to city council. So I'd like to know um, if this property is not currently on the demolition list and if we could find out what the status is from uh, licensing and inspections. Also, just a brief update on the uh, land bank. Uh, to date, the land bank has sold 43 properties in the city of Scranton that were previously on the tax claim uh, bureau repository of unsold properties. Uh, 
Mr. Pappas, the business relations manager for the Department of Planning and Economic Development, uh, reported to City Council that they also have several additional properties at different stages uh, of the disposition process. So uh, to date, in my opinion, I think that the land bank uh, program has been pretty successful. So we'll look forward to more uh, properties being sold um, in 2018. Uh, Solicitor Menorah had sent a letter out uh, after our request uh, two weeks ago, January 16th, asking the Attorney General for an update on their sewer sale review, so we'll look forward to a response uh, from the Attorney General. Also, the NDC meetings, we were discussing this in caucus, and it's my belief uh, that these meetings should be public. Um, there's been a lot of conversation. Uh, about the parking meters and other things related to the uh, parking system in the city and in the downtown. And I think that if you're going to have public officials, the mayor, uh, the city controller, and others on the board, um, that they should be open to the public. Um, and the you know, fact that NDC is a private company doesn't mean anything to me because they are dealing with a public entity. They're dealing with uh, taxpayer dollars. So uh, it's my belief that these meetings should be open to the public. And that's all I have this week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a couple items. Um, my colleagues already touched on the issue about the meters being down. Um, and God bless you. And I, I did have a number of people that um, reached out to me. And I know Councilman Evans was, was right on the spot with getting the ball rolling with this. But the, the down meters really is a serious issue. Um, for the business owners in downtown Scranton. So if it's agreeable to my colleagues, I would like to send correspondence to ABM asking that um, in, in the future when meters are down that they're not bagged, that people are just allowed to park for free, as has been uh, past practice, um, you know, when a meter is inoperable. Um, secondly, regarding recycling bins, which Mr. Dobson has brought up at a couple meetings, um, if we could see if the city does do any enforcement regarding that, I have noticed um, a lot of people using the city recycling bins more so for garbage than recycling, particularly the blue bins, more so than the red bins. A um, couple questions came up regarding the meeting date change to Monday. Um, I believe in our um, our office did look into this. There's currently, I think three. I think it's three less meetings than last year. Um, and as Councilman Evans mentioned, filling in with idea sessions um, throughout the course of the year, mo more than likely Council will meet more this year than last year. Um, and regarding the meeting date, the meeting date is selected by the members of Council um, to the uh, date that works the best for their schedule. Since I've been on Council, I believe we've met on Tuesdays, Thursdays, possibly Wednesdays, and now Mondays. So um, we've met every day but Friday for the most part. So there's been changes as different people come on council um, to fit the, all the schedules of, of the different members. Um, so Monday was what worked best for, for the five members of council. Um, on the agenda tonight, there is um, quite a bit of legislation for our police department. Excuse me, and I just want to take this opportunity to commend Chief Carl Graziano for all of his hard work on behalf of the city. Um, the first piece of legislation we're going to vote on is a grant um, to all the police department to implement a program for the prevention and response to drug overdose deaths. Um, as we all know that in northeastern Pennsylvania and all throughout the country, um, drug abuse has been a growing issue, and I'm glad that our chief is being proactive on that. Um, there's also further legislation regarding the Sorrenti Center which I know we've debated this at length at our council meeting, so I'll just touch on it very briefly, um, that this is um, a, a great program and a great, great building that the city is attempting to acquire um, from the federal government to have a lot of training and to have additional police presence in the Hill section. Um, not to mention <clears throat> just the storage issue, um, that it was cheaper to acquire this building for free from the federal government than to construct even a pole barn. So I just wanted to comment briefly on um, some of these items um, and really all the new legislation is pertaining to the police department and um, want to thank our chief and all of our officers for all of their hard work. That is all. 5B for introduction and ordinance creating and establishing special city account number is noted entitled 
contract for recovery program for the receipt and distribution of grant funds from NEPA Healthcare Foundation and any additional grant funds applied for and received that would allow the Scranton Police Department to implement an effective program in the prevention and response to drug overdose deaths. At this time, I'll entertain that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So um, moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, or I'm sorry, opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction, a resolution accepting a $1,000 donation from Mr. and Mrs. John Burns presented to the City of Scranton Police Department. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced to its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to ap apply for and execute a grant for the redevelopment assistance capital program through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's Office of the Budget in the amount of $1 million and accepting and dispersing the grant and coordinate the use of the grant funds with Scranton Cherry LP for the project to be named the Scranton Counseling Center. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E for introduction, a resolution ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton Police Department for a Law Enforcement Activities Grant by the Governor's Budget Office for grant funds to convert the Sorrente Memorial Army Reserve Center 1801 Pine Street into an emergency services center to be used by the Scranton Police and Fire Departments and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept the grant and disperse the grant funds in the amount of $175,000 to convert the Sorrente Memorial Reserve Center to an emergency services center. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, on the question, um, when we had this discussion originally, I had asked that uh, we look into selling the Ash Street Firehouse that's currently being used by the police department uh, for storage, basically, and then using that money that is from the proceeds for recurring costs at the Sorrenti Center. So if we can send a letter to uh, Chief Graziano to see if we're any, where we are exactly in that process, if that's been started or it's something we can get started. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F for introduction of resolution ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton Police Department to the Northeastern Pennsylvania Healthcare Foundation for grant funds for the contract for recovery alternative to arresting addicts program and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept the grant and disperse the grant funds in the amount of $40,000 for the contract for recovery alternative to arresting addicts program. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, I also want to commend the administration and Chief Graziano for the initiation of this project. Um, I think this is extremely unique and innovative and I think what's going to happen here is you'll avoid the stigma of arrest that usually follows um, a recovering addict uh, post-treatment. Um, I think that um, the other thing that this program is going to do is build community trust. The last thing that someone needs who is uh, addicted to drugs is to be thrown in jail. Uh, they need help. So I think this uh, contract for recovery uh, will build that trust, and I think it is extremely uh, unique. And again, I commend Chief Graziano and uh, the Scranton Police Department. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption. Resolution number two, 2018 accepting a $1,000 donation from Mr. and Mrs. John Burns presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department in appreciation for the rescue of their son. 
What is the recommendation for the chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution number 3, 2018, appointment of Brian Fallon, 719 River Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, effective January 1, 2018. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.